And I'll give the floor to the representative of France. Madam President, since yesterday we have seen a sudden and simultaneous outbreak of violence in the east of Ukraine. And there's nothing spontaneous about this. France condemns this violence. We call upon all parties to show restraint and to enter into dialogue in order to quickly find a peaceful solution to the crisis. Everybody must work towards de-escalation of the crisis. Madam President, the scenario that we are seeing reminds us of the events that took place a month ago in the Crimea, a simultaneous action of a small number of aggressive but determined militants determined to seize the area. And then in the background, men wearing masks, disciplined, equipped with weapons of war that you don't find in army surplus stores. These facts thrust in our face by the images on the internet are the, shame, are the same images that Russia qualified as being spontaneous demonstrations of local self-defense groups. No one believed that at the time. How can we believe that now? We have the impression that Russia, by denying the facts, is pretending that the internet does not exist and that the internet today is contradicting what it says. Let's not forget that these demonstrations were a prelude to the annexation of Crimea. Moreover, the accumulation of Russian troops over the past few weeks under cover of military operations casts a shadow on the east of Ukraine. Economic pressure is even more biting. Russia has now increase the price of gas. It is blocking goods at the border between Russia and Ukraine, undoubtedly attempting to suffocate this country that it calls a brother. Finally, Russia is systematically driving home a message of defiance to Kiev on radio and television stations, which for a lot of people who do not have access to different sources of information, the only message that they hear. Madam President, it is in this context that France salutes the cool-headedness of the Ukrainian authorities. In these destabilizing circumstances, they're attempting to solve the crisis through dialogue. And that's why the Prime Minister, Mr. Yatsenyuk, went to the east of Ukraine with specific proposals in response to the real concerns of a population suffering from the assault of propaganda, disoriented and being used by radical groups. France has always been clear on this subject, on the issue of languages or the status of the regions. We would encourage the Kiev authorities to continue their efforts to bring people to reason, to begin a constructive dialogue, and to reassure the population within Ukraine. Madam President, the future of Ukraine must and can only be determined by Ukrainians. We must support the Ukrainian authorities to organize under the best conditions an election that will ensure the representation of everyone. Our message has always been clear. We must move towards free and transparent presidential elections on the 25th of May, guaranteed by the presence of international observers. Madam President, we recall our attachment to the territorial integrity of Ukraine, and we call upon Russia to commit itself to de-escalation and together with the rest of this council to move towards de-escalation of the crisis created in the east of Ukraine by armed groups. We would also ask Russia to fully play its role as a member of the Security Council. Russia is guarantor of peace and security in the world. Whether the areas are far away or in its near abroad, there cannot be double standards. Russia today must do everything it can to help Ukraine regain stability and show itself capable of playing the role of a pillar of stabilization in the Euro-Asian Euro area that it wishes to play. We hope that the meeting on the 17th of April between Russia, Ukraine, the United States and the European Union will be held and we harbor the hope that it will give rise to solutions. This date is crucial and we would call upon all parties to show calm and restraint. Madam President, in conclusion, I'd like to issue a final 
alarm. What we may see now is a failure of all efforts that we have built together to ensure international order that is not based on force, because today it is force and force alone that is trying to impose its law. Thank you.